you got into this unexpected position of having to engage in political arguments. Well, I was. Is that you know, a fair way to put I, it? Yeah, yeah. But I've been appearing on CNN and MSNBC and and yeah. Fox now and then for years, but it really did rev up lately. Yeah, yeah you're and right. that, that's what I was kind of wondering is because all of a sudden science is political in a way that it hadn't been prior to that when yeah. you'd be appearing on these things. Yeah. And I mean, did you ever see this coming back in the day, or were you well, sort of shocked as the rest of us when this well, started happening? Well, I think happening? we're shocked because. If I understand it, now look you guys, I'm being as objective as I can, just, I am a voter and taxpayer, but Steve Bannon is this advisor to the U.S. president, and his vision is, he thinks, my understanding, my understanding, is Bannon's, Mr. Bannon's position is that government is inherently bad, so he wants to destroy it from within. So is he has influenced the president to nominate or hire people for agencies that are singularly unqualified for it, yeah. uniquely unqualified. To those of us in the science community, uh, the evidence for climate change is overwhelming. I mean, my goodness, let's go, people. It's been going on. And this last year, we got to 400 and a half parts per million of carbon yeah. dioxide at a rate that is, uh, well, I guess a million times faster than has ever happened in nature. And I remind everybody, it's the speed that it's, uh, that it's happening that's the big concern. So global warming is causing climate change. That is, to us, objectively true. But because of the fossil fuel industry, here we're in Texas, because of the fossil fuel industry, people work very hard to introduce the idea that scientific uncertainty is the same as 100% wrong. Yeah. And that's not right, that's incorrect. Point yeah. of view. Well, and it's so bizarre because it feels like we were at a point much oh, yeah. closer to dealing with this a decade yeah. ago or so, or even earlier. With well, that. I say this all the time, and you guys, people, people on what I will call the other side just love to hate Al Gore. That's yeah. just a thing with them. It's big fun for them. Yeah. I hate Al Gore. Al Gore is evil. He claimed to have been the internet. He sucks. Everything sucks. But the world would be quite different if Al Gore had been president. Yeah, uh, would have invested in different military objectives probably and would have started to address climate change. In the same way, if the previous administration's policies about energy were carried forward, you'd ex we could expect a little more progress. However, let's take the case of Texas, our beloved Texas. Mm -hmm. Get 10%, Texans get 10% of their electricity from the wind. Oklahoma gets 20% of its electricity. Iowa gets 25% of electricity from the wind. That's the future. And when you build wind turbines, in the example of wind turbines, mm -hmm. you build them here. You can't outsource the erection of wind turbines. They have to be here. And so these are inherently domestic jobs. And I know that people who work in the coal industry, they've had union protection for decades, and it's their business, and it goes back decades, I mean uh, centuries, two and a half centuries in West Virginia, for example. Yeah. But we can't be in that business anymore. We, I, I love you all. We can't, just can't be in that business. Don't, it's not me. You can shoot mm -hmm. the messenger. It's not going to help. We can't be in the coal business. Yeah. My grandfather went into World War I on a horse. He, was, he could ride a horse, I guess, yeah. well enough. He didn't get killed, which contributed to my being here. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody, no soldier nowadays, a small... There's, yeah, there's, a few, there's a few horse horses. riders. Yeah. <laughs> but very nobody serious about it. It's riding a horse into battle. They're riding tanks. Yeah. A lot of people will acknowledge this and say, yes, we have to start phasing out. But if we had start, started phasing out oil, for example, 20 years ago, oh, yeah. we wouldn't be having this kind Well, of you know, James Hansen testified in front of the U.S. Congress in June of 1988. James Hansen was the head of the Goddard Institute for Space Studies, which is part of the National Air and Space Administration, NASA. Yeah. NASA is the best brand the United States has, everybody. And so he was talking about 1988, and he had discovered climate change or become strongly aware of climate change by studying the planet Venus. He saw they observed the greenhouse effect on Venus and realized, wow, that's a serious business there on <laughs> Venus. There probably are no Venusians because they would be cooked. The chemistry that we associate with life would just wouldn't work. All the molecules would dissociate be uh, pyrolyzed. So uh, uh, this goes back decades, and the sooner we get started, the better. That's all.